I'm Amy, and joining me is Ricky and Eli, and welcome to week 21 of Growing Up Guide Pub. <laughs> this week we were joined by a friend of ours, George, and his guide dog, Joni. George sometimes joins us at our group meetings, and it's great to have him there because us as puppy raisers love to see an actual guide dog team working. It makes us really know what we're looking forward to as our puppies grow up and what our actual goal is once they are grown up. And Matt took this opportunity while George was there to go for a walk with him and ask him a few questions. How long have you and Joni been together? About a year and a half. Okay. She's my third dog, my third guide. Last guide I had for eight years. And one before that was Alba, and I only had her about a little over a year, and then she had a medical issue and they had to retire. Now, so have you been doing using guide dogs for a long time? No, well, Alba was say my first, so about 11 years. And what did you do before that to? Use the cane, use a white cane for oh, about six, about six, seven years I used a white cane. So how would you compare you know, your mobility with the cane versus uh, Joni? Oh, I much prefer the dog. I feel more, I feel more safe. I feel more secure. I just, you just feel more at ease using the dog than you do the cane. Our group meeting this time was on the Stanford University campus in Palo Alto. Our group generally meets about twice a month and we work on basic obedience, we work on distractions, and basically anything we need to learn about being a puppy raiser we often learn at our group meetings. We're supervised by a few group leaders depending on the size of our group and we have a very large group so we have multiple leaders who keep track of us as puppy raisers and the overall progress of our puppies. So movie stars have to wear head collars sometimes. <laughs> oh, she has to wear a head collar because she was pulling? She was pulling and sniffing the ground too much. And so Amy decided it was a good idea because we're working on one issue to help her with the other issue, which is the pulling. So she's not going to be pulling so much and we'll get to work on more of the distractions. During the meeting, we took a walk around the group with our leader, Marty, who wanted to see how Ricky was doing with distractions. And she was pulling a little bit, so we had to stop and put her head collar on and it made a huge difference and we were able to walk through the group without too much of a problem. We don't always use the head collar with Ricky. We always have it on hand and it's there if I need it. And sometimes she's a little excited by things or wanting to sniff the ground or pull a little bit because she's excited. So I put it on her as a needed basis and if she's doing well without it, I don't put it on her. And She did well for the first part of the meeting while we were having our lunch and eating. As the meeting progressed and she got more active, she needed it to keep her focused. Sometimes at our meetings, some of the career change dogs come if it's a meeting that they're allowed access to and it was Stanford campus and they allow dogs on the campus. So we had a few career change dogs there, one of them being Mariana, who was the puppy that we had before Ricky and she was adopted by our friend Madeline and Madeline often comes to our meetings and brings Mariana so I can get to see her and it's great to have her around because I do miss her here and there and it's nice to keep track of what she's doing and see how happy she is in her new home as a pet. I want to give a special thanks to George and Joni and all my group members for allowing us to shoot with you guys this week. And that wraps it up, so I'll see you next time on Growing Up Guide Pup.